Hello friends, welcome back to another video of Arun Anesthesia Academy. This video we will see about clavicle fractures and the regional anesthesia option for clavicle fractures. We will see in detail about the anatomy related to clavicle fractures and in detail we will be discussing about the clavipectoral fascia block. So let's start. First we will see the neuroanatomy relevant for the clavicle fractures. So the anatomy relevant will include the innervation of the skin over the clavicle the innervation of the clavicle as such and we have to see the anatomy related to clavipectoral fascia. We see the innervation of skin over the clavicle. It is by the supraclavicular nerve which is a branch of superficial cervical plexus. I had made a video on superficial and intermediate cervical plexus block. You can see the link and you can go through that if you want to know in depth about it. So these supraclavicular nerves which are branches of superficial cervical plexus it has got three branches mainly. We have the medial branch, intermediate and the lateral branch. It is mainly the intermediate branch which supplies the skin over the clavicle. Coming to the innervation of the clavicle, it is not as easy as the skin over the clavicle. The innervation of the clavicle is complex and it is often controversial. Main thing is it is supplied by multiple nerves. There are several nerves which are supposed to supply the clavicle. What we have to know is that any muscle which is attached to the clavicle, its innervation will provide sensory supply for the clavicle as well. So we have to know the muscles which are attached to the clavicle which will give us idea about the nerves and if we know about their root values it will help us in giving the exact block. So if we come to the lateral end of clavicle, the anterior part it is a deltoid which is attached and in the posterior part it is the trapezius. The deltoid part it is supplied by axillary nerve which has got a root value of C5, C6 roots and the trapezius its motor supply is mainly by the spinal axillary, sensory supply comes from C3 and C4. Coming to the medial end, we have three muscles. The anterior part, it is the attachment of the pectoralis major clavicular part. It is supplied by the pectoral nerves, which again has got root value C5, C6. And the posterior part, it is the attachment of the sternocleidomastoid. Again, it is supplied by the spinal axillary and the sensory supply comes from the C3 and C4. And in the inferior part, we have the subclavius muscle which is supplied by nerve to subclavius which is a branch of upper trunk of brachial plexus again root value c5 and c6 other nerves which are supposed to be supplying the clavicle are we have long thoracic nerve which arises from the root that is c5 c6 and c7 then we have suprascapular nerve again arising from the upper trunk again root value c5 and c6 so what we have to understand is that it is mainly the c5 c6 root which supplies the clavicle So if you see the regional anesthesia options for clavicle, we have endoscalene brachial plexus block where we target the roots. We have superior trunk block of the brachial plexus. Again, we block the superior trunk which is joined by C5 and C6. And for the terminal nerves, it is very difficult if you are going to give separate terminal nerve blocks. That is why they have come up with clavipectoral fascia plane block. So the nerve endings which are supposed to supply the clavicle is seen between the clavipectoral fascia and the clavicle. So if we can deposit a local anesthetic there, you can achieve anesthesia. We have three options, endoscalene block, we have superior trunk or clavipectoral fascia block. Endoscalene block as you know it is, it has got multiple problems. Most common but invariably it will lead to phrenic nerve blockade. Less common you can have Horner syndrome or vocal cord palsy and even rare but still deleterious you can have vertebral artery injection or intrathecal injection or even pneumothorax. So it is in this context that people started looking for other regional anesthesia options for clavicle surgery. So either you can do superior trunk block, you can reduce the number of complications but still you can have complications and people were looking for a more modern and less complicated technique that is how they ended up with the clavipectoral fascia block. So these blocks will cover the osteotum supply or innervation to the clavicle bone only. To reach the clavicle we have to block the skin also that is the dermatome supply. So for the dermatome supply we have three options either we can block the superficial cervical plexus or an intermediate cervical plexus or else we can block the supraclavicular nerves or else we can just give a subcutaneous infiltration over the site of incision. These are the three options for covering the dermatome. So when we see the clavipectoral fascia block, first we will see the anatomy related to it, then we will see how to give the block. If we see the anatomy of clavipectoral fascia, 
as the name indicates it extends from the clavicle it is seen just deep to the pectoralis major muscle and it encloses the pectoralis minor muscle so it is clavi pectoral fascia up it encircles the clavicle and it has got two layers one anterior and posterior layer just below the clavicle after the subclavius muscle these two layers fuse and it continue down until they reach the pectoralis minor muscle where again they split into two to enclose the pectoralis minor muscle and distal to the pectoralis minor again they join and they continue down up till the axillary fascia and it is attached to the axillary sheath so if you see the attachments of clavicular pectoral fascia as i said superiorly it is attached to the clavicle medially it is attached to the first two costochondral joints inferiorly as i said it continues into the axillary sheath laterally it is attached to the humerus where there is attachment of the short head of biceps brachii and coracobrachialis if you see the extent of the clavicular pectoral fascia above the clavicle actually these layers are attached superiorly to the investing layer of deep cervical fascia what we have to know is that in this superior attachment this area may be crossed by our supraclavicular nerves so if you are giving a local anesthetic injection between the clavicle and the clavicular pectoral fascia your supraclavicular nerves may also get blocked and thereby you may have a coverage over the dermatome as well so after giving the block you can check whether the dermatome is blocked and you can proceed accordingly i'll discuss all these things in triple shooting coming to the technique of clavipectoral fascia block as of now only ultrasound guided technique is mentioned blind or landmark based technique is not yet mentioned but if you see the anatomy it is possible to do a landmark based technique but i could not find any literature or any youtube videos regarding this so i will be discussing only about the ultrasound guided technique so clavipectoral fascia block is done in supine position with patient in supine position we stand on right side of the patient for either side like if you want to give right side block or left side block you stand on right side if you are a right handed person and you keep the ultrasound machine on the left side of the patient directly facing towards you or you can keep it on the head end whichever ergonomics is comfortable for you you can follow that we use a high frequency linear probe we start from the medial end of clavicle in the parasagittal plane keep the probe on the medial end of the clavicle with the center of the probe directly over the body of clavicle we see the clavicle with the underlying acoustic shadow we see the subclavius muscle and the superficial pectoralis major muscle we inject the local anesthetic just above the clavicle just on the anterior surface of clavicle we have to inject the local anesthetic you make a scout scan to see the fracture site this is important because if you inject the local anesthetic between the fascia and the clavicle the fracture or the hematoma may prevent the spread of local anesthetic to the opposite side or beyond the fracture so ideally we have to make a local anesthetic injection on either side of fracture that is on medial and lateral side so once we get this acoustic image we use a 23 gauge 4 cm short bevel needle we come in plane that is from caudal to cephalar direction you go through the fascia pectoralis major and reach the anterior surface of the clavicle between the clavicle and clavipectoral fascia at this area clavipectoral fascia may not be visible so idea is to come and get in contact with the clavicle bone so once you hit the bone after a negative aspiration inject the local anesthetic to see the spread so once you are sure that the spread of the local anesthetic is there around the clavicle you can give the drug we have to do the same procedure for the medial and lateral side of fracture the volume of the drug which we commonly use are 10 to 15 ml of local anesthetic we can use long acting local anesthetic like bupivacaine levobupivacaine or ropivacaine concentration of 0.25 to 0.5 percentage will do in this case we can add an additive like dexamethasone to get prolonged analgesic effect so once we give the block the onset of block is seen between around 10 to 15 minutes and you can have a duration of around 8 to 12 hours depending upon the additive you add so if you see the advantages of clavipectoral fascia plane block you basically avoid the complications associated with endoscaline brachial plexus block so you can use this for patients who have compromised pulmonary status such as patients who are copd or patients who have rib fractures where you cannot give endoscaline block next advantage is it is a very superficial block with a clavicle acting as a natural backstop 
you basically don't have any complications associated with clavifectal fascia plane block other than for any routine block next advantage is it is a very superficial block even a novice practitioner can do this block and the last but not least the most important advantage is you can give a bilateral clavifectal fascia plane block for bilateral surgeries which is not possible with endoscaline or superior trunk block so what are the triple shooting things which you have to see when you are giving a block for clavicle fracture as such not clavicular fascia block for clavicle fracture as such first thing if you are doing a endoscaline brachial plexus block if you give more than 10 ml the local anesthetic can even block the cervical plexus so you may not have to give a separate dermatome local anesthetic injection so once you give the block check whether the dermatome is covered as well so if it is covered you can proceed with the surgery same thing for clavicular fascia plane block as i said the supraclavicular nerves cross the clavicular fascia so when you give a clavicular fascia plane block the supraclavicular nerve may get blocked and your dermatome coverage will also happen so again after giving clavicular fascia plane block see the dermatome supply whether it is covered or not third thing what you have to see is if you are doing tens nailing of the clavicle especially if the entry point is from the medial end there is one possibility that the medial end skin coverage area may be supplied by the contralateral medial supraclavicular nerve as well so in this case you can give a local skin infiltration at the skin incision site to cover the supply from contralateral supraclavicular nerve fourth thing what you have to know is if the clavicle fracture involves the lateral end of clavicle along with the coracoid or acromion fracture the clavicular fascia will not cover these areas because the supply is from the subscapular nerves or sometimes from the axillary nerve depends so these are supplied by c5 c6 nerve root In that case instead of clavicular fascia plane block you can go ahead with an endoscaline brachial plexus block or a superior trunk brachial plexus block. Next what you have to consider when you're giving clavicular fascia plane block is that when you're doing clavicle implant removal especially plate and screws. So during the first surgery the clavicular fascia would have disrupted. So when you're giving the clavicular fascia plane block for the second surgery you may have an incomplete or a patchy block or in few cases you may get a complete block. So either you can go ahead with an endoscaline or superior trunk block or you can try the clavicular fascia plane block whether it's acting or not. So these are the five trouble shooting things you have to see when you are giving blocks for clavicular fractures. So that's it for today. I think you like the video. Hope the idea is clear. So until we see next time, goodbye. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.